Forget PowerPoint animations because Morph does everything but much easier and much slicker. Look at that. Text, images, icons, recoloring, moving, rotating, 3D objects, underlining, changing fonts. All this can be done through one command, PowerPoint Morph. If you have in the Transitions tab Morph here, then that comes with Office 2019 and Microsoft 365. And that is all you need. This entire tab is pretty much redundant when you have just this feature. And all you have to do is apply it to the slide and it does just that. Let me quickly show you a rundown of how that works. But first, let me just explain that my name is David Van Eyam and I publish loads of videos to my YouTube channel all the time in anything from Excel, PowerPoint. If you like my video, then please consider subscribing for more. How does this work? It's actually pretty easy. I'm going to just right click on this slide and duplicate it. And then I'm just going to um, do some stuff with the things. So I'm going to sort of rotate that. Here I'm going to change the color. Here I'm gonna, this is a 3D object. Rotate that. These are um, icons from the insert icons paragraph, which means that I can just completely change the color, the outline, anything that I want. And this one, I'm going to do some picture effects, like I'm going to just give it some transparency. Also a very new feature, Office 365. Uh, artistic effects, I can also crop it to be like that. And I can rotate it. Let's make some objects. Well, this, let's completely change this. This one, let's rotate it some more. And this one, we can change the font. Add a highlighting color, change the size, all of that stuff we can do there. And then this one that was out of the slide, let's just bring it in. So let's put it in there. And again, this is another icon. I'll show you how to get those in a minute. But I've just essentially gone from here to here. Now, this is how it looks without a transition. That's slide one, that's slide two. Not very different. But the things have moved, changed, etc., etc. All I have to do is go to the second slide, click on transitions and choose morph. And that is it. That is it. Think about all that that is doing. That it's changing the colors, it is cropping, it is adjusting this picture formatting, rotating, moving, reshaping, changing font, backgrounds, bringing stuff in from outside. All of this is achievable through morph without going through and one by one actually assigning the animations. And probably the only one I still use today is the wipe animation. Uh, pretty much all of the others I can replicate almost entirely through Morph and I don't need to have a very complicated animation pane. This is a webinar that I do showcasing um, how mobile phones are too light, but email was a little bit too heavy for what we want. But then we go back to 1995 and email is too light, letters are too heavy. Do you see how seamless that is? It gives your slide a way to get from A to B. I'm sorry, I feel so passionate about this more feature that it has redefined the entire way that I approach PowerPoint. As I go from there, hiding it behind another emoji and watch this one. What I think is Teams is the fusion of WhatsApp and Outlook. So I make it the fusion of WhatsApp and Outlook. I think it's great. It's amazing what this can do. One thing worth noting is that when I use Morph, I have way more slides because each slide is sort of a still frame in a movie. So I can sometimes do like a 150 slide presentation in around an hour. But really, since I'm copying and duplicating slides, it doesn't take me very long to build it. It's just that PowerPoint stores it as separate slides. Yes, it does make a bigger file than using animations, but in today's day and age, the storage space is so cheap, I haven't found that to be a particular issue. So here we have some morphable shape options, shape fill, outline, effects, also stuff with the text, including special text effects, uh, rotating, and then it actually flips it around, alignment and changing the size as well as position. Morphable image options, so you have all of these things pretty much that can work with them. And 
Oh, love that. So that's pan and zoom effect. You can do that with the cropping and resizing. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. I love that one. Um, and also, I'll show you remove background. So that's pretty cool as well. If I go to the insert tab in the new PowerPoint, I can go to stock images. Love this feature. Let's look for animals. There's thousands of stock images that Microsoft have pre-purchased. Let's pick a couple of them there and I'll show you some of the features. I'll use design ideas to give me some layout options. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate the slide control D and do certain things to these. So for example, this one, I can go to this one. I love this center shadow rectangle. This is really a very, very slick way of presenting it. This one, I'm going to crop it. And then the pan and zoom effect you can get to by resizing it. This one, I'm going to actually remove the background. So this is a feature that allows PowerPoint to guess which bits you want to keep of the picture and you can redefine it like that. I would normally spend a bit more time getting it perfect, but for this, I'm just going to keep all changes. And then in the second slide, transitions morph. Look at that. How cool is that? Now you can apply morph to multiple slides just by multi-selecting and click morph as well. I kid you not, when I have a presentation, I use morph on every slide or 99% of the slide because I devise my entire storytelling through Morph. That's what I think Morph really is. It's a way to tell a story in your presentation. So text, if you change any text here, so if I just add an extra space and I move that, transitions Morph, Morph doesn't work. It does a fade out and fade in. However, if it's the exact same text, so here, Shift F5, that morphs very, very slickly. Now, there are some extra special things that you can do with text. So something that I do for acronyms and then apply transitions morph, you can see that that works. You have to choose whether you morph with text or with other things. So the default for morph, which is pretty much 99% of the cases that I use it, it's objects. All objects come under that. However, you can change it to words or characters. So words won't do anything here. Characters will take the common characters and bring those in. It doesn't morph other objects. So I can't morph the text with words, but then also morph this shape. So instead, I tend to just keep it as the regular effect options. But the way that I achieve this is I have just different text boxes. So that's a text box, that's a text box, and this is a text box. It's just sort of a manual way that I can just keep the more thing. Here I've got some icons that I added using the insert icons button and also a table and some smart art. And let's just make the smart art quite different. So let's change the layout. Uh, Smart art's really great, especially if you use the design ideas to convert things to smart art. And then you can even sort of change some text here in the smart art. For some reason, the text is a lot more forgiving when it's not in a text box and when it's in another thing like a table or a smart art. Go to the last one, transitions morph, and there you go. Even rotates it and flips it, does everything with the smart art really well. I like to have all these icons like this and then explain how people's brains wander into the clouds and then slowly by slowly with a boring presentation, other people start to wonder. Look at how you can build a frame by frame, almost movie-like slick appearance with the morph technique. So how to go beyond the basic rules. So this is really, really cool as well. You have this sort of bird and a text box here. And you can use Morph to actually transition that into this balloon. You can go from one picture to another. You can also, if you look at the text box, actually change text 
in a different way of what I've shown you before. And you can have an object fly in like this. Plus, you can stop a morph by doing what I've done here, which is going from this. It doesn't just move, it fades out and then fades back in. So let's go through how to do those. So over here, I have one slide and I have the second slide. And what I want to do is I want to block the morph of this object. And I want to morph from the shape into the shape with different text image into the other image. So how are we going to do that? If I um, go to this one and I control click them and I go to home, arrange and group, then this is a grouped object, whereas the one in the first slide is not. So morph would normally do the color change and everything else. But when an object is grouped, it does not allow that. It's going into the black in the background because that's the background color of my slides. It's not morphing, it's going into black. There's the black behind. So we can actually manipulate things. So over here, I have something called a selection pane. To get to it, click on arrange and then selection pane. That turns it on or off. And this is a special way of working with morph. If you give two objects you want to morph the same name and you start with double exclamation mark, so I'm going to say this is text, then you can do stuff that you can't normally do. So I can morph from one shape to another shape. The text inside doesn't matter like we've seen it does usually. And I could do the same with the image. So this will be pick. Again, you need these two exclamation marks. They call this bang, bang morph <laughs> to let that happen. And then finally, the other way that I did the sort of fly in animation is I just sort of copy this, go back here and paste control V. And then if I drag that out of the slide, then if I start in the top one, I can see that all of those things are happening. The picture is going from one to another, the shape is going as is the text, and the object is flying in. Now, you can also change the speed of the morph like you can with any animations. In Transitions tab, you can go to Duration and you can change this. I typically keep it at two. Uh, I can show you what one looks like. I think it's a bit too fast, like that. So I think two is a good number. You can, however, if you're clever, change the morphing transition of certain things, definitely when it comes to movement. So this one that's flying in from far, if I make him really, really far, and he goes now over here, then if I press Shift F5, he'll fly in really fast. But if I start him off a lot closer, like there, then typically it'll be slower and it will have less lead up time because it doesn't need to go as far to come into it. There is more guidance on the support.microsoft.com website about Morph. Uh, it explains here what it works with, text, shapes, pictures, smart art, graphics, word art, charts don't morph though. And here, tips and tricks. And this goes through the bang bang naming scheme. So here it explains in more detail where it does and doesn't work. And it also has these uh, kind of cool ideas as well. A lot of the things that I'm showing you are how to animate words, how to animate an anagram effect, zoom in. Please like and subscribe because I have tons more video about all sorts of applications like this. Thanks for watching.